scripture says son, that any kind of a affliction in our bodies, he's right there and he's ready to touch us. And I'm ready to meet him over there, mansion over the hilltop. sickness or if it's a burden or whether it's someone in our family, a loved one, 
that's going through something, he's right there with us. And you know, this song that I'm going to, we're going to sing tonight, singing in the valley, and when we're walking through the valley, you know, we have, um, we have the Lord with us by our side, and sometimes it's rough, and sometimes it's hard when we're going through the valley. And, but you know, listen to the words of this song tonight. It's a wonderful testimony, and truly I can say that when we're going through a valley, sometimes we have to start thinking about this song and the words to it, and I believe it will help us to get through a lot of our burdens. Pray for us tonight as we sing this song, Singing in the Valley.
is there. Right. God is omnipresent. He is with us no matter where we are. No matter where we are. And I thank God he said he will never leave us nor forsake us. But he said I will be with you always even when in the end of the world. We can be so grateful. And uh, those that are out there by Facebook, we lost a single a little bit. We had technical difficulty. But uh, the phone connected with it with the single again, and we're up and going, and we're glad that you're with us tonight. And you know, my heart's desire for every child of God is that we all reap the full blessings of God. That's true. Don't you feel that way? You know, I want every child of God to be like a super soldier in the army of God. That's my desire. Full of faith and glory. We walk with the glorious Jesus Christ. And I want every child of God to walk in the glory of God. Every child of God to have complete healing, you know. Along with our salvation come a great, the best benefits package that you can ever have. It's not only for our future, you know, to live eternity with Jesus Christ. But it, it's a great benefit package here on earth. And I don't want to live one day or one second without my glory. You know, he's so wonderful to me. And what's been laid on my heart lately is, and it, it's been on my heart for months. And uh, I, I want to spread the good news how wonderful the Lord is. How glorious He is. And how He is worthy of all of our presence. Of all of our worship and glory. You know, in the Old Testament, David wrote about going in the house of the Lord. Going in the temple to praise God and to worship God. And David did not always, he didn't start out. He didn't go to seminary. He didn't, his training was that he was a shepherd, a little shepherd boy. In John 4 and 23, it says, But the hour is coming. These are the words of Jesus Christ. But the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshiper will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him, God is his spirit, and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. And you know, he spoke this for the well, to, to this little Samaritan lady who had had many husbands. And, and, and you know, he, because she wanted to know about worshiping God. And he went on to tell her about living water. And he went on to tell her about her life. And she got excited about God. And she ran into the village and told the village that I met a man who is a prophet of God. Well, getting back to David, David grew up as a young shepherd boy. And he loved music. David is the father of many of our instruments. He was the father of the harp and, and woodwind instruments. He Whatever he could find to do to make music, to bring glory to the Lord. And I can see a David. Maybe he was around 12 years old or so, out there tending the sheep. And along came a bear. And he was worshiping the Lord. And you know, no doubt he felt the Spirit of God and he was high on Jesus Christ. And when the bear came, I could see him taking that old slang and going around and killing the bear. And at another time, a lion came after the sheep. And again, David worshiping the Lord. He slaughtered the lion and protected the sheep. You know? And then this was his training in life. He went from that to being a king. He was anointed as king, even though he didn't get the throne right away. And he was... He established an army and he led the army. But he was never trained to 
to be king of a nation, especially the nation of God's chosen people. But David knew how to worship the Lord. He knew how to hear from the Lord. The Psalms are beautiful. David taught, wrote in Psalms like the Lord Jesus Christ was his Savior. He called him my Lord. My Lord. You know, he said he, he didn't leave my soul in hell, but he delivered me. He had a revelation of the coming Messiah. He understood what it was like. Where did he receive his power to face Goliath and bring down the giant? By worshiping God. Because when he was out worshiping God, taking care of the sheep, he killed a bear and a lion as a young boy. And it's uncertain of what age he might have been when he faced Goliath. But he came and the armies of Israel was trembling before Goliath. A huge giant. He was somewhere between 9 foot 11 and 11 foot 2 because they measured him with a span and that's the, that's the size of a man's hand. And uh, men's hands are different sizes. So we don't know for certain. But we do know that he was over 9 foot 11. And he was probably less than 11 foot 2. But he was a, a huge man. And he was a warrior. And David said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that defies the armies of the living God? His faith was in the Lord. Where did he get this faith? How did he know that the Lord would deliver him and be with him? Because he was a worshiper. He worshiped God. And you know, we need that today in our churches. That, and we need that in our homes and our lives. And we're entering into a place, Israel was entering into a place where the Philistines were overpowering, overthrowing. You know, it hadn't been for this young shepherd boy, they may have lost the battle. God sent a deliverer. And the deliverer in the form of David. It said David was a ruddy lad. And what that means, he was short and stocky. And he either had blonde hair or red hair, which was rare in Israel. And, and, uh, and but David really knew about worship. That's where he got his inspiration. That's where the Psalms came from from his worship. He wrote, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, and I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Because he knew the Lord, and he was introduced and experienced the Lord through his worship. We need the faith and the power and the strength that David knew. And it's there available. David was before the cross. How much more should it be in our lives on this side of the cross? When we have a Savior that died for us. When we have a Savior that laid down his life for us. That gave his all. How much more should we worship him and praise him? And you know, we, we are not going to see our churches come alive and begin to spread and to win the world and turn the world upside down to Jesus Christ until we get into true worship. And you know, many churches... Many churches are, they have dance teams and different things and different kind, types of entertainment. Worship is not entertainment. But worship is having an encounter with God. Amen. Worship is to lift up his name, yes. to praise him. Worship is to a loving relationship. Yes. Jesus said, I shall love the Lord thy God with all our heart, mind, and soul. That is you get that from entering into worship. If you truly love the Lord, you love to worship God. And in Psalms 29 and 2, it says, Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. That's a fantastic scripture. And that, that, that's some great instruction that a lot of our churches need to learn today. It says, Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. If you 
you're going to truly love the Lord, you're going to love His holiness. He's holy. He cannot abide sin. But we, we have to thank God that He's full of mercy and grace. It's all through the Psalms, David continually said, His mercy endures forever. His mercy endures forever. If He wasn't merciful, this, this old world could not exist the way it is today. If God didn't have great mercy, this, this world would just fatal, just disappear instantly. But his mercy allows people, their free will, allows their people to sin in a great way. And it, it has to be said, there was a day when it repented God that he made man back in the days of Noah. And, and I don't believe that it could have been much more sinful then than it is now. And I, I, I believe that God is very sorrowful for some people. But you know what? God has got a people that love him. God has got a people that worship him. God has a people that worship him both in spirit and truth. And you know, God has a people that will follow him. We'll follow him. Wherever the path leads, we will follow Jesus Christ. And you know, worship him in the beauty of holiness. Holiness is a condition. It's not, you can't write a set of rules and live by them and be holy. It doesn't work that way. You can't legislate holiness. But holiness is a condition that came through Calvary because Jesus Christ died on a cross and his sin washes our his blood washes our sin away. His blood washes our sin away. The Lord forgive me for that mistake. I got my mouth ahead of my brain I guess. But you know we're, we're human. We're human. And you know had a little trouble with my glasses, and these glasses are 20 to 25 years old. <laughs> and, and you know, I'll be glad when my new glasses come in. I think I'll, I'll feel more natural and more comfortable. But you know, the, the flesh has to endure things. But that doesn't mean that we need to be tainted with sin. But we need to be able to worship the Lord in, beauty, in the beauty of holiness. How do we find the beauty of holiness? At the foot of the cross. It's a, we find it through the cross of Christ. Psalms 51 and 11 says, So the king, I will greatly desire your beauty, because he is your Lord. Worship him. Worship him. And you know, we, we, not on, it's not only a commandment that we worship the Lord, but it should be our greatest desire. You know, our greatest desire. In marriage, if you have a good marriage, each one of you, you love your spouse. You love your spouse. You know, and uh, Pam and I, we don't want to be separated. We want to spend it. Now that we are, have the ability, we, we love spending all our time together, you know. Once in a while, I, I, I'll get into Russellville without her. But most of the time, we're together. She, she won't go without me. <laughs> I tell her, I'm busy. You need to pick the groceries up. I'll wait on you. I'll wait on you. You know, when you love one another, you want to be together. We need... We, we need to feel that love for our Lord. We need to feel that closeness for God. Psalms 5 and 7 says, But as for me, I will come unto your house in the multitude of your mercy. In the multitude of your mercy. You know, when they built the temple in the wilderness and the Lord entered into it, not even the priests could enter in. But the glory of God was in there. The glory of God was so straight, so strong, and so mighty in the temple that they could not enter in. And you know, there was a time when if, if, if you entered
entered into the Holy of Holies, it was a death sentence. You would die when you went in there. But thank God that Jesus Christ, when he died on the cross, the veil was rent. The veil was rent. And we could enter in because his sacrifice made us worthy. We can do nothing to be worthy on our own. But we can believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. We can accept that he is sacrificed. We can believe that he died on the cross and rose again. Therefore, we can enter in to the Holy of Holies. And we can worship him in the beauty of holiness. But as for me, I will come into the, your house in the multitude of your mercy, in the fear of in fear of you, I will worship toward your, your love, holy temple. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before my face. Make your way straight before my face. And you know, worshiping the Lord in the beauty of holiness helps us to remain clean, helps us to remain holy, and it builds our faith and builds our strength so that we can face any battle. And when the giants come, Goliath will fall. When the, when the bear and the lions come, they will fall because we know how to worship God. We know how to, to partake of his riches and his holiness. And you know, we can be overcomers and conquerors through our worship. And you know, I had dear friends that were close to life, the end of life. My mother and different ones. And, and you know, they knew that they would soon be entering in. I had a friend who was a, probably one of the greatest missionaries that ever lived. That man had a fantastic ministry. They brought a dead man out of the jungles when he was over in Africa. And, and he prayed for him and he was raised from the dead. Uh, voodoo and witches crap and stuff come against him. And the Lord protected him all the way. And, and you know, and when it come time at the end of his life, he was happy and joyous. And his friends came to cheer him up. And they said, I'll lift left there blessed and lifted up. I was the one that got blessed. I was the one that got lifted up. I, I found no sadness and sorrow in him. And you know, uh, it, when I'm entering it into my life, I know what's ahead of me. I, I know that I have a heavenly Father who's prepared a place for me. Amen. He's prepared a place for me. And I'm going to enter into the glories of God, our Father. And you know, richness and mercy. If you truly believe that you're born again and you have eternal life, why not worship God? It, you know, it, it's greater than if the government would send you a check for a trillion dollars. It's greater. Money cannot buy what is a free gift from Jesus Christ. Money cannot buy it. Ne neither can we earn it. Neither are we worthy of it. But you know, worthy is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Worthy is the Lamb of God. And he's worth worthy of all our praise and our glory and honor. And you know, I, I feel like this. Uh, when I take my last breath, Be glad that I have entered in, that I'm entered in, that I'm in a greater place and a better place because, you know, I, I fought a good fight, I've run the race, and there's laid up for me a crown of life. And greater than, greater than that, one day, in a few more days, you'll join me also. You'll join me also. And we'll all be glad around the throne of God.
And we'll have no more sickness, no more sorrow, no more aging, you know, no more aging over there. But we're going to be young and youthful. And, I, you know, I won't have to worry about glasses. I won't have to worry about any, any physical infirmity because we'll be made whole and complete. I won't have to worry about my hair getting thin and, and you know, and, and my teeth wearing, you know, because we'll have a glorified body. We'll have a glorified body. One, one that lasts forever, one that is built by our Lord and Savior, made by our Lord and Savior, that will never wear out and will never grow old. Isn't it wonderful what we have in store for us? So, how much more should we rejoice and praise the Lord and lift him up, worship him in the beauty of holiness, and find strength in him? I am so honored. I am so honored and so grateful and thankful that Jesus Christ paid the price for me. That one day he saw my need and he met my need on an old rugged cross 2,000 years ago. You know, this, this book is so fantastic. Parts of this book was written uh, 3,500 years ago. Parts of it. And, and it goes up to being a cult. The newest part of this book is only a couple thousand years old. But you know what? It's accurate of what's going on today. Right. It describes exactly what the world is today. It says father and mother will turn against their children. And you know, families will turn against each other. And it's, it's so prominent today. It's because your political views are different. They don't want to speak to you. I have a niece that's not allowed to see her grandbaby because her political views are different. She, she, likes, she likes Trump and they don't. And so therefore, she's denied and not allowed to see her grandbaby. That's what a love of many has grown cold. You know, it's, it's just, and my brother can't see his grandchildren because political views. It's just, this world is just getting more messed up every day. But you know, we have, we are part of a kingdom that can never fail. We're, we're part of a kingdom that will never fade away. And the head of that kingdom is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Jesus Christ is coming into his inheritance very soon. And you and I are a part of that. Part of that. And you know, it's just, it's just so fantastic because God's kingdom is glorious. Everything about God is glorious. His holiness is glorious. You know, and, and his mercies are so rich and thank you. And you know, even if I don't understand how to receive and live by everything in this book. Although I try my best, but you know, I, I haven't obtained everything that's in this book that I'm striving for. Even if I don't, it's still worth it all. It, and he's still worthy of praise and honor and glory. And so, you know, I'm gonna live the rest of my days here on earth being grateful and thankful and worshiping the Lord. How about you? Amen. How about you? And all of you that are watching us by the way of the internet, if you have any needs in your life, Jesus is the answer. It, 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 this world has gotten so hard and people are so full of fear and gripped full of fear. You know, Jesus is the answer. He said, perfect love cast out all fear. He said that he would always be with you. And he is there without open arms to receive you. He, he has sent his love and his mercy. And his, the spirit of God covers the whole face of the earth. And he's there with you right now. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice. That you bring healing and hope in every life, God. That you meet every need. And Lord, that you lift up your children and God give us, help us to taste good days, great days, Lord. We love you and we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. And you know, oftentimes when I go 
outside and, and if, if I feel a little bit of uncertainty, it seems like I hear a dog cooing in the distance. And then a dog, a dog is very special in the Bible. A dog is peaceful. And you know, it, it, it seems like God uses na even nature to ensure us that, that he loves us. In so many ways, he's there for us and he's continually reaching out. And no matter what you're going through, the Lord can turn it for good. The thing that seems like it's going to tear you down and pull you down, the Lord can turn it for good. And I can't tell you the times in my life that I've told the Lord, if you don't help me this time, I'm not going to make it. Well, God has never failed me. And he never, ever will. Because that's not about who God is. God bless you. And uh, there'll be a service Wednesday, Sunday morning and Sunday night. There'll be some special speakers. And then the following one, next Wednesday, I believe Nathan will be back. So God bless you.